Hello class. In this video, we are going to be installing Ubuntu 2004 in a virtual machine using VirtualBox as our hypervisor. So um, before we start, a little disclaimer. In this video, I'm going to go mostly over this presentation and then we are going to create a virtual machine in VirtualBox. There is going to be a timestamp where I go over the presentation and then also a timestamp of where I start doing the virtual machine. If you want to read the presentation at your own pace, all you have to do is uh, pause this video, read the presentation and then click the timestamp to go to the particular, uh, the particular area where I am uh, doing the installation. Um, if the opposite, you know, uh, all you want to do is just listen to the presentation because you probably just because you don't want to read it or for whatever reason, then you just click on the particular timestamp that belongs to the presentation. With that said, let's start having fun. So, let me do it in full screen. Beautiful. So this uh, presentation is, is set in different parts. Uh, and although I'm not going to do everything of this presentation in this video, especially the last part, we're only going to go up to the installation of Ubuntu and the first boot, and then we are going to stop over there. Um, it is important that you know you understand that. So the first part is preparing your virtual machine because you know before you install the operating system you need to have a computer where you're going to install it. So what we're going to do first is you're going to click on create a new machine, create a new virtual machine and when the wizard pops up we're going to set these particular settings. Uh, obviously for Ubuntu 18.04 we're using 2004 so you're going to call yours CIS 106 Ubuntu 2004. Uh, or you can name it anything else you want. You can call it my Ubuntu machine, or you can call it blah, 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 I ate a potato, whatever you want. It's your computer, it's your VM. I'm not going to tell you how to use your own computer. Um, I choose to put a significant name that indicates the purpose of a computer as a name. Then um, you can leave the machine folder as default, uh, because I, I, chances are, since the virtualization is new to you, you don't have a custom setup or a dedicated hard drive for VMs like I do, but you can leave yours in the default setting for now, in the default place for now. Uh, the type is going to be Linux and the version is going to be Ubuntu. That should be selected automatically for you if you included the word Ubuntu in the virtual machine name. VirtualBox is smart enough to know that the the type of operating system is going to be Ubuntu 64-bit. Now, if you don't see an option for 64-bit, chances are that virtualization is not properly enabled in your computer. At which stop, at which step, I suggest you to stop and enable virtualization in your system before you continue this uh, this part of the of the of of the of the tutorial pretty much again if you do not see an option for ubuntu 64 bits that's because you do not have virtualization properly enabled in your system and you must enable it um so here again like in the other presentation all of these balloons on the side are going to explain you what all of these options is but i already did anyway for you so i'm just going to speed through them uh, over here we're going to select the amount of ram now be very careful always know if you if you don't have enough ram in your system at this point i suggest you to stop and contact me you know if you're not understanding that just stop instead of just stop contact me we'll go over it together we'll look at your computer together if you know how much RAM you have, right, then give your computer enough, then don't forget to leave your host computer with enough RAM so that it can operate while the virtual machine is on. Like this computer right now has 2 gigabytes of RAM. I don't suggest to give Ubuntu less than 2 gigabytes of RAM. It's a suicide mission. You know, it's going to be way too slow. It's, at 2 gigabytes of RAM, it's slow enough already, I personally believe. You know, it's a slow to a point that is usable, but it could do better. But 2 gigabytes of RAM is enough. Now, if you have 4 gigabytes of RAM, you know, you cannot exceed 2 gigabytes of RAM on your VM. It's just not going to be usable. If you have 8 gigs of RAM, you know, you can you can give your VM 4 gigs of RAM, although that, I believe that's overkill. 2 gigabytes of RAM should be enough for you. Um, now, hard disk. Now, you have three options when it comes to hard disk. The description for those three options are right over here. Read them at your own pace. You know, it's self-explanatory what they do, uh, but the description is right there just in case uh, you want to go 
uh, over it. Obviously, we're gonna create, we're gonna select create a hard disk now because we have not created a hard disk for this VM. So the obvious option is the one in the middle. So that's what we're going to choose. Um, then, it, then the hard disk type. Now, VirtualBox supports four types of um, of hard disks, of virtual hard disk, right? Uh, it supports obviously the regular VirtualBox, you know, image file, which is the first one and the one that we are going to use. But it also supports um, VHD, you know, which is used by Microsoft operating system, and it also supports um, BMDK, which is used by um, VMware. Now, uh, the storage uh, that we're going to select. Now, the type of a storage, dynamic or fixed. Now, in the video that I made about uh, insta you know, using VirtualBox, I explained the difference between dynamic and fixed size. If you want a, uh, you know, a thorough explanation, go to that video. If you want a quick explanation, then read the balloons on each size. Fix will allocate a specific amount that you tell your computer to allocate of your hard drive and it's going to occupy it right away. Dynamic is going to grow until the point that you specified. So if I say I want this computer to only use 50 gigabytes, the file size is going to start as small as it possibly can, but it's only going to grow until 50. The difference between the two, fixed size is a, is a little faster, but that, that's it. I prefer dynamic because I love to have as much space on my hard drive as possible. Now, in this case, we're going to select dynamic. So let's continue. Uh, now, how big do you want your hard drive to be? 50, gig 50 gigabytes is enough. 50 gigs is enough. If you don't have that much space, do 40. But 50 is enough. Ubuntu is going to take about 20 gigabytes in its base installation with base applications. And we're going to use about 4, 5... Yeah, uh, my apologies. About five gigabytes more after this base installation, and that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Again, this is a VM for us to play around with. This is not a VM for us to really use as a real computer, right? So we don't need to go crazy on the storage. Um, so now, once you have created your VM, make sure to open the settings because there are a couple of things here that we're going to change. So the first thing is we're going to change the clipboard to be bidirectional and, and also the drag and drop to be bidirectional because we're going to be dragging and dropping a lot of stuff from our host computer to our desktop in a, you know, in a, in, in a regular basis. So you might as well enable it for now, right? Uh, in the description part, in the description part, make sure to put there the name of the computer, right? The host name of this computer, because during the installation, we're going to be asked this information. And it's always good to have it handy. Um, your username, I choose my Blackboard username. You can also choose your Blackboard username, or you can make one up if you want to. You know, there is no, there's no rule, you, whatever, you, whatever, you know, your heart's content. Uh, for your password, you know, you can either use something simple like CIS 106 or PCCC, since this is a test virtual machine anyway, this is not your regular everyday computer, or you can choose something complex if you want to. I suggest you write it down there, whatever you decide to choose as your password, right? Because that little description box, box is like our notebook, you know, and it's good to have stuff written down over there, especially when we are doing tests in our home labs like we're doing right now. Uh, we're not going to use this encryption, so you can forget about that. In the system section, make sure that your settings mirror mine. Enable I.O., hardware clocking UTC. Uh, make sure that the boot order is exactly like mine over here because we want to boot from the, from, the, from the CD first, right, from the virtual CD first. And uh, we want to also make sure that you set your RAM to 2 gigabytes unless you want to be more generous with your Ubuntu machine. This is just an explanation of everything that you're seeing over there, you know, for those of you who are curious about it. Uh, in the number of processors, if you have a quad core CPU, make sure that you give two, gigabyte, two, two processors to your Ubuntu virtual machine. If you have a dual core CPU that is good enough, then just use one. But if you have a quad core, it would be great if you can give it two, two cores because Ubuntu by default might get heavy. Okay, a screen. Over here, in this particular section where it says display, we are going to make sure that we give our virtual machine 128 megabytes of video memory. Also, make sure to enable 3D acceleration in your system. Okay, now, in this section over here is when we are going to insert our virtual uh, CD 
into our virtual DVD drive so that we can do the installation of Ubuntu. Now, over here in this, in this slide, I explain you what all of this in the screen means, right? What all of this does. But I also included a little GIF that will walk you through the process of adding the Ubuntu ISO. Now, before you do this step, you need to download the Ubuntu ISO from the web. And now it's a great opportunity for me to show you where to find that. So I'm going to leave this presentation for a moment and I'm going to open Google and I'm going to Google, literally Google Ubuntu. That's it. If you go to Ubuntu.com, you know, the banner is going to have the download option. You're going to click on download and we're going to click on Ubuntu desktop 2004 LTS. We're not using 20.10. Uh, over here, if you want to donate, you can donate. You know, those these people, these great people have Canonical, you know, has given us this amazing operating system for free. If you want to, if you want to feel gracious and give them some money, that's up to you. Uh, the download should start automatically regardless of the browser that you use. Uh, but if it doesn't, then you can click on the download now button over here. As you can see, the download is just three minutes. You know, that's about it. Uh, if you have a decent internet connection, that's the same thing is going to be for you. We're going to wait those three minutes. But in the meantime, let's proceed with our presentation. Um, so uh, we're going to disable audio. We're not going to use audio here, especially because people are using Mac. Uh, and they might have some problems in their Mac computers with using audio, so we're just going to disable the audio card. We're not going to use it anyway, so what's the point of having it? Uh, okay, so that's how you set up your VM. That's how you prepare your virtual machine. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to prepare my virtual machine, and this is the point when you start doing the same thing that I do on my computer, but in yours. I am assuming in this video that you have already installed VirtualBox and you have already installed VirtualBox extension pack. So I'm going to go to VirtualBox and I'm going to click on new and I am going to name my virtual machine. I'm going to name mine test VM CIS 106. 106. Again, you can name yours whatever you want. Ubuntu and there you go. Beautiful. Leave the, leave the rest as the same. The size of the RAM is going to be 2048 megabytes. That's two gigs. Uh, I'm also going to create the virtual hard disk now, as we explained earlier. And over here, we're going to set a, the first option for VDI. Uh, and we're going to set dynamically allocated the disk space. And this 10, 10 is too little. We're going to do 50. And we're going to click on create. Once we have done this part, we're going to click on settings. Okay, uh, advanced, we're going to do this bidirectional, we're going to do this bidirectional, the description, okay, uh, here we're going to put some general information about my computer, uh, this is a test for a YouTube video, uh, uh, host name, which is the name of the computer on the network, this is going to be CIS106 test VM, and the username that I'm going to select here is going to be jdoe and the password is going to be 123, 123, right? Super secure password, the mo literally the most secure pass uh, password in the world, unhackable. Okay, now we're going to click on system. That was sarcasm, by the way, just in case somebody didn't get uh, I'm going to remove floppy. No, no floppy. Bye-bye floppy. Optical and hard disk only. IO APIC and hardware clocking UTC. Processor, I have a quad core CPU, so I'm going to do two CPUs and we're not going to touch the acceleration part. In display, we're going to set this to the highest amount, which is 128. And we are going to enable 3D acceleration. We're, gonna to we're not going to touch that. And we're not going to touch that. In a storage, we're going to click on empty. Then we're going to click on the little disk on the corner. Then we're going to click on choose a disk file. You are going to go to your downloads folder where you have your Ubuntu ISO file, right? As a matter of fact, if I go to the downloads folder, you're going to see that I have my ISO file over there that just finished downloading from the internet. So I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to click on open. Beautiful. I'm going to click on OK. And I have successfully mounted my virtual machine. Done. We have done. We are done with part one of our presentation. 
Now, let's work with part two, starting your virtual machine. Okay, how do you start your VM? Oh, that's, 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 that's a game. That's a walk in the park. Just click on the VM and click on the start. Click on the VM, click on the start. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this? Oh, that's nothing. This is the computer telling you, hey, what do you want me to do? From where do you want me to start? Hey, you know what, computer? I want you to start from the ISO file called Ubuntu 2004 that I just placed in the virtual DVD drive. And I want to click on Start. I can close that because I don't need it. And Ubuntu is going to load its loading screen. And before I go back to the presentation, I want to explain a little bit of the loading screen. Uh, so this section over here is going to check the health of the ISO file or the virtual DVD drive that you inserted. Is the disk correct? Is there any data corruption? And if that checkup goes well, your system boots. Right? The process continues. Now. Once Ubuntu has successfully loaded the content of the DVD drive, similar to how the Windows installation goes, Ubuntu asks you, hey, you have two options here, my friend. You can either try me or you can install me. Now, what does the Try Ubuntu section does? Well, if you click on Try Ubuntu, it's going to load what is called a live installation medium, which is a live environment that you can use as a regular computer. The only difference is that no data will be saved, but you can go on the internet, write documents, do whatever you want. As a matter of fact, when I was a student at PCCC, um, during, my, the, during the semester that I took Composition 1, my computer broke. I felt too lazy to repair it, so what I did was that I installed, I just created an installation media from a flash drive, you know, just install Ubuntu on the flash drive, as if I were to install Ubuntu on a computer, and simply plug it to the computer, and just use it from the flash drive. I finished half of the semester from a flash drive. I did all my essays from there. I did. I submitted all my work from there. I, that was my internet. That was my to-go place. That was, my, that was everything. I used everything from there. Uh, and it was a perfectly functional environment because that is some basic task that the life environment can do. Of course, it's not going to do crazy stuff, you know, but there are a lot of functional things that you can do on a live installation environment. I'm going to show you some of it now. So I'm going to go back to my virtual machine. And as you can see over here, I can click on try Ubuntu and load the live environment. Or I can click on install Ubuntu and go straight to the installation wizard. Sorry. Okay, Ubuntu. Come on, load. Load. Time is precious. Time is money. Beautiful. As you can see, this is a full flesh environment that I can use. Uh, if I want to go on the internet, I can open Firefox. And I, let's say I want to look for pictures of potatoes. I like potatoes a lot. I can read my mail too. It has a mail client as well there, but I'm not going to open my mail. I'm just going to look for potatoes. Great, right? Okay, I can go on the internet. I can also create documents because it has the LibreOffice suite, which is an open source alternative to um, actually you can say it, you can say it outright, an open source replacement for Microsoft Office. There are a lot of people who swear by LibreOffice, uh, mostly because it, it crashes very little. Whereas Microsoft Office, oh my God, that thing crashes on me all the time. It's a good thing I don't use it no more. Uh, I can go over my document, say essay, essay for English one. Uh, there you go. Uh, how to grow potatoes in a can by 
John Doe. See, I can close it. I can also create presentations if I want to because he has, you know, a libre offering press. Um, I can install applications there that are not installed by default. I can format hard drives as well, you know, and recover data from, you know, from the hard drives that are corrupted if I so desire to. Uh, there is a lot that I can do in this live environment. It's fully fleshed, it's fully usable. But what I want to do now is I want to start the installation process because I actually want to install Ubuntu. So I want to double click over here. As a matter of fact, the, the fact that, Win, that Ubuntu can run from a flash drive is one of the reasons why you should, as a computer te uh, you know, technician or you know, as a computer enthusiast, have always, 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 always have a, you know, a flash drive with Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution ready to use at all times. You know, I have made good money, you know, by recovering data from broken computers just because I have had that handy with me. Okay, so the installation wizard starts very easily. It starts with your welcome menu. But let's go back to the presentation, go through the entire wizard, and then we'll do it with me. So I'm going to go back over here, and uh, that's how I install the installation wizard. The Ubuntu installation wizard is called Ubiquity. That's its name. Um, after I select the language, I need to select the keyboard layout. A lot of it is is, is uh, supported by default because Ubuntu is a multi-language, multi-language support operating system. So, you know, uh, so here we have uh, the second section that allows us to uh, select which type of installation we want to do. You want to do a normal installation, meaning we're going to install Ubuntu and a bunch of other applications there alongside that are also very useful. But you can do a minimal installation. The only thing that you're going to have is Ubuntu, a web browser, and some basic utilities. And that's about it. Nothing else will be installed. Or you can do a normal installation, but then look at the other options in the button. Download updates while installing Ubuntu. This is super useful. That means that while the system is getting installed, updates are being fetched from the internet so that when you boot on the computer on the first time, the process is faster, you know, and that's great. That's one of the beautiful things about Linux. I just love how fast you can just get, get Linux up and running. Now, the next thing is you can install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi cards. So you, here's the thing. Now, not all the hardware that you have in your computer has open source drivers available. So Ubuntu cannot install that by default for you. I mean, they can if they want to, but it's not, that is against our Linux philosophy of using open source software. So what Ubuntu does is it tells you, hey, look, if you want proprietary drivers, right, closed source drivers for your hardware and codecs and all this other closed source software that is required to use a computer nowadays, you know, you have the option to install it. If you don't want it, okay, just don't click this. Just don't install it. You have this freedom. It's one of the beautiful things about Linux. You got the freedom to choose, and we can choose whether we want it or not. In our case, we want it because some of the, that proprietary code we need. So we are going to install it. So make sure that yours mirrors mine, and we can move on. Um, installation type. So we have a couple of options here on installation type. We are going to obviously use erase disk and install Ubuntu because our hard drive is empty. There is nothing in there. But you can do a couple of more things. For instance, if you click the option something else, you can customize your installation of Ubuntu to however you want. My installation is custom because I have certain files on a separate drive and other files in other drive. Because when my computer breaks, you know, it's easier for me to fix it when I split it away. I don't suggest you to use something else until you are a little bit better versed in the Linux world. Because it can be tricky, it can be complex. Or if you are like me and you like to read, you can go ahead and read an entire guide and read the manual. You can go ahead and research it on your own and just try to do a custom installation because you know, because you can do it. It's not that complicated, but if you don't have a good grasp of a lot of things, you might break things you might not know how to fix. You know. But Again, if you're like me and you like to do things the hard way, why don't you just give it a try on a VM? The, the, remember, this is why we use virtual machines, because we can break things and fix them. Now, when you click on... Oh, I think I missed a slide there. Let me see... Yeah. So when you click on Advanced Features, it allows you to select uh, other features that 
by default we're not going to use and they go outside of the scope of this class but it's good to know like you can select a different file system like btrfs from the default file system now i i understand you might not know what a file system is right now but you'll get to know what a file system is in a couple of lectures from now but you know i just want you to know that those advanced features that's what it means it's just other things that more advanced users might want to use on their system again we're going to choose today's disk and we're going to continue with installation uh, over here is gonna tell you hey I'm gonna format this hard drive these changes are gonna be made you cannot revert them once they're made that's all that's all this warning is telling you okay now you can select your time zone and we are gonna choose New York uh, then over here we're gonna select the section of who you are you remember back when I tell you you know in the description box of your BM write down a couple of your notes well that's when this comes handy because let's say you don't remember what was the name of the of the computer that you want to give it. I don't remember what name I was cho I was going to choose for this VM. Was this a server? Was this a client? I mean, was this FTP? Was this the database? I don't remember. Let me let me go back and see what was the name. No, because part of your job as a system administrator is to maintain documentation. And part of your job, you know, and a good and, and, and somebody who writes good documentation, you know, always make sure that the names of the computers, as long as their IP addresses, are logged in your documentation, right? And having that written down on the v on the description of the VM is a good idea. Now over here, you know, you can fill this out. Your name, well, obviously you put your name there. Uh, your computer, you put your computer name. This one is called CIS106 VM. Uh, then you put your username. Again, my username, I picked my Blackboard username, R.A. Alberto. But you can pick whatever you want. You don't have to pick your Blackboard username. Hey, you can put I am Batman if you want for all I care. And then you choose a password. Uh, notice that Ubuntu tells you if the password that you choose is a strong password or not because it checks that password with a list of local easy to guess passwords that it has a store in uh, in its system itself. Now, once you do that, you're done. All you have to do is wait. Go grab a coffee and then come back in what? Five, ten minutes and you're done. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do this entire process in this video with you so that you see. So over here, uh, we're going to click on continue because yes, we're using English unless you want to put Chinese. Uh, we're going to click on continue on the keyboard layout. We're going to do a normal installation. And yes, I want third party software. Pam, 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 pam. This part takes a, takes a second. Perfect. Yes, I want to erase the disk and I want to click on install now. Yes, I want to continue. I understand the warning and yes, I want to erase the entire hard drive. I am in New York. Yes, so I'm going to click on continue. I mean, technically in Jersey, but hey, New York. Uh, so my name, my name is John Doe and the, the computer's name, the, com the name of the computer is I don't remember what was the host name. Let me go to here, machine settings, and let me go to description. Oh, I remember. Uh, it was CIS6 test VM. So CIS106 test VM. And the username was JDO. JDO. And the password was 123. 123, again, the most secure password in the planet. Now I'm going to click on continue. And voila, that's it. That is it. That is it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video now, right? Uh, I think we have a couple of more slides on this section over here. Uh, nope, that's it. The only one is once the installation is done, you are pressed with this message that tells you, do you want to continue using the VM or do you want to restart? So <clears throat> my apologies. What I'm going to do now is I am going to pause the video. I'm going to wait until the installation is done. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee, and then I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, that was some good coffee. Now that our installation is complete, uh, we're going to restart the system. Sorry. 
since we are using a virtual machine, all we have to do is press enter and the amounting of that ISO file will happen automatically for us and also the rebooting. So, okay. Once you boot on, Win on Ubuntu for the first time, right after you log in, you will be presented with a PowerPoint, with a, a little presentation or a slideshow like this that pretty much introduces you to the operating system. Uh, we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. Um, then this section over here, preparing your VN for the course, is going to be a separate video because there are some things that I need to explain. Uh, but for now, you have a fully perfect working Ubuntu virtual machine. What we are going to do now is we're going to um, do an update of the system, right? We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do an update of the system and we're going to take a snapshot. That's it. We're going to do nothing more but that and we're going to be done. So I'm going to go over here on my VM and I'm going to click on my user and I'm going to put in my super secure password of 123. Uh, and once it's done, we're going to go over that little slideshow. Okay. Okay, so if we want to connect our our online accounts, we can do it right here. We can just log into our Google account and connect our Google Drive, for example, or your OneDrive account if you want. I'm not doing none of that, so I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, we can set up Live Patch too, but you know uh, that's just for installing crucial updates, and I don't want to do that either. Um, uh, this is for um, some telemetry. Uh, if you want to report some data anonymous, uh, anonymously to Canonical, um, one of the beautiful things in Ubuntu is the privacy aspect. Uh, well, that's in every Linux distribution, so you can say yes or no, different than in Microsoft, that a lot of telemetry is sent. Uh, here, I'm just going to click on no. I don't want to send no information. At the end of the day, this is a VM, so there is nothing that they are going to benefit out of. I'm going to click on next over there, and you're ready to go. You can open the software center to install software if you want. I'm not going to install software or anything. I'm just going to cancel that. But the very first thing that I'm going to do is update my system. And there are a couple of ways that I can do it. I can literally click on my applications over here, right, and type update, right? And I can just click on software update and an update, uh, the update installer is going to pop up. It's going to look for all the updates and it's going to allow me to install them, right? Uh, for instance, if I click on software update, let me just do it right away so that you see what I mean. It's going to check for updates. And there is definitely some pending updates that were not installed during installation. That's always a fact. You know, but a lot of the updates were installed during during the installation, so it makes this update very, very fast. And one of the greatest things is that I don't have to reboot my computer once I install these updates. I don't I don't really have to. I can continue using my system perfectly and decide to reboot and, and reboot whenever I feel like. You know, uh it's that 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 is that to me is just one of the greatest things that I that, that about Ubuntu that I get to choose you know, not all just Ubuntu, but pretty much any Linux distribution. I get to choose how to how I use my computer. You know, a company doesn't tell me how I should use my computer. Um, and that's it. If I click on install now, it's going to ask me for my password and the installation is going to go. But I'm not going to do it this way. Instead, I'm going to show you how you can update your system from the command line. So I'm going to click on my applications over here. And I'm gonna click on the on the search bar, and I'm gonna type for the application called Terminal, which will allow us to type commands to run on our system. And the command to update my system is <gasps> sudo apt update. Then I'm gonna put semicolon, and I'm gonna do sudo apt upgrade, and I'm gonna type enter. I'm going to type my super secure password of 123. And notice that Ubuntu already told, hey, look, Ubuntu gave me a summary of all the applications that require update. 
or all the packages that require to be updated. And it also tells me, hey, look, um, this is the amount of packages that needs to be upgraded, 310, 310. Do you want to continue, right? 92 megabytes of additional space will be used to install this update. Do you want to continue, yes or no? And you're going to say, you know what, yeah, I want to continue. And the update is going to be installed over there. Once the update is installed, you are going to be, the prompt is going to be returned back to you. And the prompt is nothing but that other blinking cursor that allows you to type another command. Now, I'm going to pause the video now. And once this update is done, I'm going to show you what I mean when I say the prompt is going to be returned back to you. Okay, the update has completed. And as you can see, now I am back into my prompt. I can type whatever command I want. For example, I want to clear the screen and I just clear the screen. I can close my terminal and I can turn off my computer right now if I want to or if I don't using my VM. I suggest you to play around with it, have fun. Uh, what I'm going to do now is that I am going to power it off and I'm going to take a snapshot of the base installation. Right. Just in case something goes wrong, uh, I can always revert back to having a clean and, and, and ready to use virtual machine. Uh, yes, I want you off. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go back to VirtualBox and I'm going to click on, uh, I'm going to switch this from details to uh, snapshots and I'm going to click on take and I'm going to name this base install updated. And I'm going to click on OK. And that's it. Um, in, the, in the following video, we are going to be setting up um, uh, the virtual machine for our everyday use. We know we're going to be doing some optimization, so stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.